Good morning, Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. Hey, this is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson on this wondrous Wednesday. It's good to have you all with us this morning. It's good to be able to minister together. Man, it's so good to know that the Lord loves us. Hmm. I rejoice in knowing that the Lord delights in his people. <laughs> you ought to say amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for another day that you have given us. God, I pray that as we would go about our day today, we'll be reminded, God, that you're present. And God, that you love us. And God, that you have our best interest at heart. May this grammar word this morning be a delight to our soul and that we will know that, God, you have spoke forth unto us today. We can trust it and we can live our life accordingly. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Amen, amen. Good to have you all on this morning. Brothers and sisters, listen, got a couple of questions. And as we are uh, into our part 12 of this series, Father, Here I Am, I got a couple of questions I want you to think about. The first question is, how do you respond knowing somebody is watching over you? How do you respond, you know, knowing somebody is watching over you, watching over what you do, watching over what you say, watch you, how you handle things? How does that make you feel? Do it make you feel secure? Do it make you feel as though that you're not trusted? What do you do knowing somebody watching over you? Yeah. And it really all depends. But the truth of the matter is, the being watched is being watched. Either, you know, you receive, you believe that they're watching over you for uh, to help you or watching over you to condemn you. Now, being a pastor, y'all, look, I know God called me to pastorship. I know that. And so I have to take knowing I've been called to pastor and everything that comes along with it. But one thing I can tell you that comes along with being a pastor is I'm always being watched. <laughs> People are always watching over what I say, what I do, how I'm going to handle this situation, how did I handle that situation. I mean, I'm always being watched almost like a, you know, a, you cannot make a mistake. And I'm going to tell you early on, that was so stressful for me. It was so stressful because it's almost like I, I'm i not human no more. I cannot make a mistake. If so, people are going to say, oh, you're supposed to be a pastor. You're not supposed to act that way. Well, there's a certain way I shouldn't be acting in the first place. Say amen. Or, or Christians, right? Right. But being watched, man, it used to it used to just kind of, you know, be a burden for me until I understood some things. And um, this verse have helped me uh, over the years. And so knowing this verse that we're going to uh, study this morning is going to it, it should bring some comfort and some security for God's people. OK, so as we get into this verse. The Remmer word found is verse Psalms 139, verse 11. David says, if I should say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me. David was understanding that the Lord is watching over him no matter what. Even the darkness could not conceal him from God's watchful eye. Dad, yeah, right? Just think about that for a moment. It's one thing that people watches over you. And sometimes people may have their own intentions while they watch over you. You know, they're looking for you to fail or they're looking for you, you know, where you can drop the ball, you know what I mean? Hey, but God intent and his intention and his motivation and his mode of operation for watching over us is much different than mankind, okay? 
Now, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. Mankind can have good intentions, okay? They can. Mankind can be well intended and have great intentions. Me as a shepherd watches over the flock. I have great intentions about watching over the people. Now, brothers and sisters, there's something about when you know you're being watched. Do you perform better? Do you do better? Are you better with who you are and what you are called to be? Knowing that somebody watch. I know people watch over me. I know I got to be on based on the word of God. I have to exhibit this word. It has to mirror my mannerisms, my, my conversations. Hey, man, how I serve people. You know, how my attention span is when people are talking to me. Hey, I know that I am watched by the Lord. I'm held accountable to what the word of God says based on God's watchful eye. Now, that being said, let me just let me just ask this question. Do, do, you, do you want to be watched by God? Do you want God watchful eye in your life? Do you want God to watch over you coming and going? Do you want God to watch over your relationships? Do you want God to watch over your decisions that you're going to have to make based on life? Do you want God to watch over that? Or you want God to put his eyes somewhere else and, and you do some of the other things, but yet you don't want God to watch you when you do this or say that. Okay, all right. Okay, knowing that God watch for eyes on us, here's, the, here's, here's a question. Do we live our life as we know we've been watched by God? Hold up, hold up. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. That's heavy there, Pastor. No, listen, listen. Do we live our life as though we knowing that we've been watched by God? See, if that's the case, then based on what we know of the word of God, it would be a delight for us to live out God's word because of what? We've been watched by God. Now, I just want to say this based on the scriptures, not only that we're going to be judged by God, God got it right. He, he Listen, he's not going to come up all of a sudden the day of judgment and start, you know, this is the first thing you die, I'm going to judge you by. He's going to judge us by our lifestyle based on the word of God. He's going to use the word of God and he's going to say, I saw you. You, you and I can't say, God, I didn't do that. No, 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 I didn't do that. No, I didn't say that. No, I, I was intended to do that, but I'm sorry I didn't get that done. He said, my watchful eye has always been over you. I got you. I can see you. Now, here it is. It can, that could be a positive for us, or you can take it as a negative. In other words, if you take it as a negative, it's like, man, I don't want to be a part of what God is doing because he always watching me. Or you could take it positive and say, I want the watchful eye of God to be on me because I want to be different. I want to be different in my marriage. I want to be different in my parenting. I want to be different on my jobs. I want to be different in my pen, in my in, in my singleness because the watchful eye is not only watching me, it's going to stop me too. Yeah, yeah. It's going to stop me when I'm not to do some things I, ought, I really want to do. But things I ought not to do, his watchful eye, knowing that, is I'm going to be reminded and convicted not to go there. Come on, somebody. Here's the word of the Lord. We all know this scripture in Psalms 121, verse 8. Verse 1 to 8 says, I will lift up my eyes until the hills from which help was my help coming from. Watch this. My help comes from the Lord, which, watch this, made the heaven and the earth. So, so here it is, if we lift up our eyes from which where our help come from, come on, we know that we'll lift our eyes because we know the watchful eye of the Lord is on us. And because the watchful eye of the Lord is on us, therefore we can depend on his help. You can always depend on the help of God. I am telling you, God is with us. He says, not only that, he says, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. That means God ain't never going to be moved. There's nothing going to stop God from watching over us. He can't be injured. He can't be distracted. He can't be discouraged. And I am telling you the presence of the Lord is so real because here it is. He has his eyes on his people. Come on, somebody. Now, he says, behold. <laughs> 
He says, he will not even slumber. God don't even go to sleep. He's so good in watching over me. He's so good in watching over you. He ain't sleeping. You may think your situation is so unique that God can't get you out of it. You may think your situation is so unique, man, that God don't know what's going on. You may think your situation is so unique that you ain't got time to trust God. I am telling you, the watchful eye is on you. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> he goes on to say in the scripture, he says, that Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Come on, somebody. Oh, man. Today is going to be 94 degrees. It's going to be humid. going to be sunny. And, man, you may want to bring your umbrella outside when you go outside. You need that shade. You need that protection. God is your umbrella. Boy, when it rains outside, we put our umbrella up. Put the umbrella up. God is your shade of protection. You just got to say, I'm, I receive my watchful eye on me. Watch me, God. Watch me do what you called me to do. Watch me to say the good things. Watch me to do what I'm supposed to do in, 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 in engaging in life. Watch me because my lifestyle is a credit to your word based on what I've read. Watch me. You hey, listen. You know, sometimes when you was in grammar school, your teacher would walk around, you taking a test, and she watching, and you know, you may not know the answer. You can peep over there and hope that your hope that your your your, your, your other classmates may have the right answer, and a teacher watching over you like that. And you get nervous. You ain't got to get nervous when you're doing what's right before God. You want God to watch you. So I want to ask you, are you ready to release your faith on this wondrous Wednesday? Knowing, watch this, that God is always alert to what is happening in our lives because we are his people. Well, if you want to release your faith, let's keep it simple, saints. How are we going to keep it simple? Based on what Jesus said, we got to know what Jesus said about his heavenly father and what God says. He said, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28 and 31. You got to get this. You got to know what Jesus said about the watchful eye of his father. He said this, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Brother, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Come on, somebody. So we ain't got to worry about what people watching me. You see, this, this passage has helped me as a pastor. Don't worry about people, what they say about you, Pastor Rob. Just do what I tell you to do. Hey, listen, they going to watch you all you want. You give them something to see in and through me. I want you to be an ambassador for me. So when people watch you, they can watch the living God that's in you, son. So don't you be insecure about what you can and can't do. All you got to be insecure in what I told you to do because I'm watching over you. I got you. You and all you got to do is be the beacon I've called you to be. Then it goes on and said this. Here's the comforting word. It says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside the father's care. And even they very, he says, and even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Come on, somebody. Y'all may not see, I still got hair follicles. I still got a little hair up here, y'all. Come on, man. It's just kind of thin in this little area here. But if I let it grow, it'd be patchy. Come on, somebody. He even know the patchy hairs right here. All the hairs. on He know all the hairs on your head. Even the patchy. He know your long hairs. He know every number of your. He numbered them. I am telling you, ain't that something about a God who's watchful? He know the very follicles of your hairs. So, therefore... Based on the word of God, there's nothing we can do that's hidden from his sight. Everything's laid bare before the eyes of whom we must give account. Come on, somebody. Hey, allow yourself to be watched by God and know that you are watched by him. And don't worry about, man, what other people are saying. Oh, you better be concerned about what you're doing because God is always there. Heavenly Father, we bless you on this wondrous Wednesday. We, 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 we give you the praise. We give you the glory. God, I thank you that David said, but you are always alert to what has happened in our lives. There's nothing that you don't know, God. Oh, God, I pray that we will go after. Oh, look it up our eyes to the hills with coming our health. We know our health comes from you, God, because God, you, 
you're watching us. You you know when we when we go, you know when we fall, you know when we slip, you know when we rise, you know when we sit, you know. Oh God, you know all things because you don't slumber. You, you don't slumber or sleep. Oh God, you alert because you know all things. And I pray that we will live our life according to your word and know that you got our backs. Oh, you be glorified, God, because we have declared and decreed that we want and we will acknowledge your watch why and we will give you something to watch. Oh, Jesus, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen. Y'all just been kissed. Come on, somebody, on this wondrous Wednesday. Man, it's good to know that God got you. So don't be looking behind your back to see, should I do this or shouldn't I do it? You better be remembering that God is watching you and he got you and he's going to protect you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to guide you. You're going to be the best dad, the best mom, the best cousin, the best sibling, the best friend, because you know that God accept your love as you accept his and he got you. He's leading you and his path. He's giving, he's giving your path of life by the word of God to live by. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson. Come on, somebody. Listen, we are still going to be outside because it's Wondrous Wednesday. We're going to be on the corner of Central and Madison. We're going to be sharing the gospel. We're going to feed the people. We're going to worship. I'm going to preach. I'm going to lay hands. Whatever the Lord wants to do, man, I just want him to be there with us because I said, and I want you to declare here, Father, here we are. No matter, no matter what, how hard it is outside, we're going to serve. So meet us there. Come on out there, man. Put on some red or something, man. We're going to share this gospel with the community of Austin. I love you. Keep praying for me as I pray for you. Oh, man. Bless the Lord with all our soul. Have a great day in Jesus. I'm out of here.